Hello. Well, Neil, how's it going? Not too bad, yourself? Not too bad. Um, we're over with you today. We're just kind of outside Christchurch, am I right? Yeah, you're sort of Norfolk, Cambridge border. So we're sort of work on the two. So we're out with you today uh, with Walden Farms. Um, tell me a little bit about what you're doing today. Uh, we're planting potatoes today with an 8RX, and a 4 row Medema platter and AVR tiller. Aye, so a little bit of a different setup then. <laughs> uh, there wouldn't be many setups like this in the country, I don't think. No, definitely not. <laughs> there's, no there's not. And uh, when, when did the planting season start for you? Uh, we were a bit later than normal this year because it was so wet. Um, I would say we've been going week 10 days now. We tried to aim for the 17th of March, but it was more towards the end of March before we got going this year. How long do the planting season normally go on for you? Uh, about six weeks. Well, we try to get finished for the end of April, but weather depends on as, as normal. So you're driving the mighty 8RX today anyway. When did she actually land? Uh, we got it last week of October. We got it, um, and then we done a bit of drilling with it and plowing, cultivations, and now we're on to the planting with it. Yeah, because it's is it a 9 metre pottinger drill you normally have on hand? Yeah, 9 metre pottinger. Oh, she can, she can move on with that, alright, so she can. <laughs> but you were saying you actually had the prototype of the 8RX out before this lady landed? Yeah, that was last winter, 19. We had the prototype be at RX and I think as soon as it landed the, the decision was made we were going four tracks instead of two. You, once you've had an 8RX you wouldn't go back to that one track again. No, because you were you were driving you were driving an 8370 RT, weren't you? Yeah. Uh, it was on RTs for about ten years. So and well, within the hour you never wanted to see an RT again. <laughs> <laughs> like apart from going up from two tracks to four, what would be the main differences for yourself? Comfort wise, you're not the seesaw and sort of bouncing over over bumps and our roads wouldn't be the best around here. We're no. On this you could do 40k most places as long as the implement behind you will stick it. Yes. <laughs> will, will the planter stick that is what I want to know. Uh, if you're on a big main road and no traffic coming, uh, you probably could, but then you meet all the traffic and she's a, a bit wide on the road, so you have to have an escort van in front of you whenever you're moving. Yeah. And like, what weight would that whole outfit be like? I think the tractor is sitting around about the 18 ton mark. Um, I'm not sure what the planter is itself, but I know we can get about four ton of seed onto it. And then the 18 ton then of the 8RX, what, what's that compared to the 9RX then? Oh, 9RX, and you're in a different league altogether. I think she's sitting at about 22, 23 maybe. The boss, I don't really think you can compare the two because the, the 9RX is, is yeah. just so much more power. They got things sitting well over 600 horse. So it is, whereas this is 410. So uh, the 9RX, oh, she's on the machine as well. And have they let you away on her much? I have had a few goes on it, sort of the main fella drives at Ben, if he's ever off, I would go on the 9RX. Um, vice versa, if I'm ever off, he would go on to this. So we, we sort of get to drive the pair of them. And like, from your own point of view then, do you prefer the 8RX over the 9RX, or are you more of a power man? I would say I would the 8RX, because I'm more versatile, I can do more with it. There's no PTO or anything on the 9RX, so you wouldn't be able to have a setup like this on it. And I suppose one of the main questions that I do want to ask, you've obviously, you're driving the 8RX, you're the 410. Why did you go with the 410 over the 370? Power. Everybody likes power. We always tend to just go for the, the biggest one on the range. But obviously the, the main difference between them would be the gearbox. Yeah, the 370 has got the variable the variable gearbox, whereas the 410, uh, 
that doesn't have the variable box, it'll only have the D23 sort of manual semi-automatic gearbox. Personally, I would prefer a variable. The E23, there's three range changes in it, and on this work, if you're right down between that range change, you can you can feel a thud or a judder sort of whenever she goes between ranges. And after being on a variable transmission for ten years, like it, it takes about a getting used to. Mm -hmm. I was talking to your boss Adrian, and he was saying obviously you went for the 410 on a planter purely due to the speed that you can actually get the planting done within the field. Oh yeah, I didn't think you'd need that extra power, but once as soon as I put it on the drill, I uh, noticed that extra power. She just walked away with it, and on this job, on the real good going. I'm probably up another kilometre an hour compared to the 370. So it all adds up like if you can get over it a bit quicker. Uh, especially whenever you have a wet spring as well, you want to, when you can push on, keep going. Is this a busy enough season for you at the moment? I know I've caught Ben obviously out with an IRX and then we caught Andrew on the 6155R doing a bit of beet planting. Yeah, uh, we'd, we'd be fairly busy in the spring now. We're, there's a lot to try and get on. There's onions, potatoes, sugar beets. There's about a spring week going on as well. so. We're kept buzzing. Because that was an absolute, it's an absolute massive bit of kit that Ben's hauling behind him. The, uh, so the 12 meter Delbo? That's the one, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right, but he was telling me that the 9RX, she wouldn't even know what's on behind her, like. 
No, she she can definitely pull it well now. Sure she can. And um, obviously, a lot of your gear up here is on track. But when I caught Andrew with the six one five five R, that was obviously one of your real tractors. Would you have many within the fleet? The big tractors, sort of your main cultivation tractors, would all be on tracks so at bar one. We've still got them wheels. But then all the smaller tractors, like your 215s and 155s, we'd have on wheels. Because then they would be on grain carton at harvest and obviously yeah. carton, carton spuds away as well. So the, your tires would be better on the road. It's, it's, all, it's all John Deere here, isn't it? Everything's John Deere apart from the loaders. And that's only because John Deere don't make them anymore. <laughs> But um, one thing, obviously, it's, it's a big change for me coming up here. It's all flat and you don't do grass. It's all tillage up here. Yeah, no, there's no no livestock really in this area. Yeah, massive flat, arable land. Uh, as you say, that's, a, that's as flat for as far as you can see. I was told that it's, it's flat enough up here that if you lost your dog, you'd see him running away for about four miles. <laughs> uh, you need a good whistle to, get him, to try and get him to come back again. Um, it's obviously a big change for you. Cause where is it you're from originally? Uh, from Donna so not that far outside Londonderry. Yeah, there's a there's a slight difference. Coming up in 16 years now in July since I first first come to Waldersey. I know Andrew's from around that area as well in Northern Ireland too, and he seems to have been here long enough. Yeah, I think Andrew's been here 10 years, I think maybe now. You must enjoy the work, and you must enjoy the company to have stayed here for that long. Oh, they're definitely, definitely are now. I've, as I say, I can't complain working to them. Like, they're letting me drive an 8RX. <laughs> <laughs> I can play an 8RX. No, and they're actually paying me for it as well. Hey, living the dream, really. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's absolutely brilliant. Anyway, um, Neil, thanks a million for having me out over the last couple of days. And um, we'll get more of a look at this uh, 8RX. All right, no problem. Cheers. Thank you. Andrea drives the beat drill, he made me tray. Basically just somewhere to put the paperwork and whatnot and uh, he could make it fit anything to be honest. There's two bolt holes on the front pillar where you could put brackets in to hold the second screen. So he's made it that you just basically bolt it into those holes and then he's put slots down the sides here so if you want to put your second screen in again you just bolt it onto there. So you wouldn't have to take that tray out or anything. He'll get, he'll get a nice mention there now. <laughs> oh, I better get commission out of this. <laughs> he might give this one to me for free, maybe. <laughs>